Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Thursday, May 11th, 2023. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're here at First Presbyterian Church and we're going to do what we ordinarily do and that is read our daily lectionary text for today and talk about it a little bit and see what the Lord might have for us today. Let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Lord, we thank you for this day, this opportunity to be in your word. Lord, we're grateful that you are a God who does not leave us alone or abandon us in the midst of the difficulties that we face, but continues to speak to us each and every day through your Holy Spirit as sent by you, our Heavenly Father, and you, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, so bless this time today, Lord, and let all that we do and say be glorifying to you and useful for building up the community of faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting today with Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout to the Lord with a shout of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with the psalm. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our uh, Hebrew scripture prophetic word today comes from Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 1 through 13. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time while he was still confined in the court of the guard. Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city and the houses of the kings of Judah that were torn down to make a defense against the siege ramps and before the sword. The Chaldeans are coming in to fight and to fill them with the dead bodies of those whom I shall strike down in my anger and my wrath. For I have hidden my face from this city because of all their wickedness. I am going to bring it recovery and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. I will restore the fortunes of Judah and the fortunes of Israel and rebuild them as they were at first. I will cleanse them from all the guilt of their sin against me, and I will forgive them, I'll forgive all the guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. And this city shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and a glory before all the nations of the earth who shall hear of all the good that I do for them. They shall fear and tremble because of all the good and all the prosperity I provide for it. Thus says the Lord, In this place of which you say, It is a waste without human beings or animals, and the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate, Without inhabitants, human or animal, there shall once more be heard the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voices of those who sing as they bring thank offerings to the house of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. For I will restore the fortunes of the land as at first, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in this place that is waste, without human beings or animals, and in all the towns there shall again be pasture for shepherds resting their flocks. 
and the towns of the hill country, of the Shephelah and of the Negev, in the land of Benjamin, the places around Jerusalem, and in the towns of Judah, flocks shall again pass under the hands of the one who counts them, says the Lord. And from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their, their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written... As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Our gospel passage today comes from Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city, how much Jesus had done for him. And back to our psalm, Psalm 68. Let God rise up. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord, be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, 
The earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. The Lord gives the command. Great is the company of those who bore the tidings. The kings of the armies, they flee, they flee. The women at home divide the spoil, though they stay among the sheepfolds. The wings of a dove covered with silver, its pinions with green gold. When the Almighty scattered kings there, snow fell on Zalman. O mighty mountain, mountain of Bashan, O many-peaked mountain, mountain of Bashan, why do you look with envy, O many-peaked mountain, at the mount that God desired for his abode, where the Lord will reside forever? With mighty charity, twice ten thousand, thousands upon thousands, the Lord came from Sinai into the holy place. You ascended the high mount, leading captives in your train, and receiving gifts from people, even, then, even from those who rebel against the Lord God's abiding there. Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation, and to God the Lord belongs escape from death. But God will shatter the heads of his enemies, the hairy crown of those who walk in their guilty ways. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea so that they may bathe your feet in blood, so that the tongues of your dogs may have their share from the foe. Your solemn processions are seen, O God, the processions of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers in the front, the musicians last, between them girls playing tambourines. Bless God in the great congregation, the Lord, O you who are of Israel's fountain. There is Benjamin, the least of them in the lead, the princes of Judah in a body, the princes of Zebulun and the princes of Naphtali. Summon your might, O God. Show your strength, O God, as you have done for, before, for us before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings bear gifts to you. Rebuke the wild animals that live among the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the peoples. Trample underfoot those who lust after tribute. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Let bronze be brought from Egypt. Let Ethiopia hasten to stretch out its hands to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. On our final psalm today is Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. What if I ask you today, where do you want to go with any of these things? <laughs> I wanted to start. I know I'm just, no. I'm just playing around. So yep. uh, Psalm 68, yes. you know, the kings of the armies flee, they flee, they flee. And I think about how Legion fled out of that man that was mm -hmm. possessed in Luke, how uh, Jesus does demonstrate power over the authorities uh, and the spiritual realm and the demons and all of these things. Um, it's just we might not always appreciate how these psalms take place right. in regular life. How does uh, how does Jesus exhibit any of these capacities in this day and age? We think you know Jesus is not with us physically, mm -hmm. but he sends his spirit to us. Are there ways that we are encountering these complications or these uh, difficulties 
that are described in Psalm 68, but then the authority of the Lord over these things. I don't know, that's just kind of the first thing that popped into my head where uh, Jesus just commands those demons and they come out. It's not right. that he engages in some big, long, drawn out, convoluted battle. He asks them their name, they admit that there's more than one, and he just, Let's go. time to go, time to go. Um, and even Jesus demonstrating a power over the demonic realm, uh, this man being freed from these things, the response of the people, the response of the Gerasenes is what? Fear. Fear. Right. It's interesting that we, we recognize this power. Even the demons, the demons, you know, Jesus, son of the most high, even the demons know who he is. Um, but here we have people coming and, and they, you know, they know he's Jesus, but yet, and we talk of all this power and this authority and this might that he has, but then whenever he exercises it, it's like, Ooh, that's a little bit more than I, you know, it's, yeah, right. it's, instead of that being a comfort that, you know, he had, he, you know, this man that's possessed, can you, I mean, he's, goes around with no clothes, he's clearly not in his right mind. And so they've seen this and now they come and he's sitting and he's clothed and he's in his right mind is what it says. And instead of saying like, look, he exercises power over even evil, even these demons, it's, you would think that would be comforting, but it, that right. what it's so, that's, I've always struggled with that. Like I don't understand I think that should give comfort, but it doesn't. Right. They're like, oh, wait a second. Well, and, and, and I wonder if, if even that's how we can appreciate it today. We who, um, you know, I'm just going to say, often can live lives of, of comfort and ease. I know we all have our ordinary problems right. and stuff like that. You know, everybody does. Um, but what, what Jesus does in the midst of healing this man is he places more value on this man's life, on the condition of his soul, on the reconciliation of him with his neighbors and, and with God. But he, he loves this person so much that he is uh, willing to destroy the economic system that these people were participating in. Right. Your herds of pigs are important to you but less important than an individual person. And they go rushing off a cliff and they die and all the swine herds are like, um, so they recognize power, right? but power that does what? Power that elevates the, uh, a right relationship with a person created in God's image over the impersonal um, economic system that others are engaged in. And I think right. that's probably where that fear comes in because as long as Jesus maintains power in a certain area, a certain box, like right. I'll let Jesus touch this aspect of my life, but anything else, I'll take care of, I'll that. Take care of that. Or right. I'm afraid that he will take care of it. And maybe that's part of the problem. We who can get too comfortable in right. the things that we do, uh, we can see demonstrations of the power of Jesus and then fear that he might actually do the same in our lives. And shake our lives up. And yes, right. what we think that we've got planned and set forth, um, he comes in and disrupts that. And mm -hmm. yes, so, right. Which I think goes right into that judgment passage, actually. In Romans, right. In Romans, because... Um, it comes in, you know, there are people who choose to eat, there are people who choose to abstain, and it says, you know, don't judge them. But when it comes down here and it's talking about um, that, do that in honor of the Lord, I do think there are people that, that do things and say, look at how, you know, look at how righteous I am, or look at these good things that I'm doing. But this is saying, you know, we don't know people's hearts let them honor and glorify God in a way that mm. that they they are honoring and glorifying God just because it looks differently than yours the way that you do it, it's okay but the key is that it is done in honor of him right. not of ourselves and so um, well that and that, so right I'm sorry Go no ahead. no that's 
you're good. Well, I was I was thinking, um, yes, along those lines, if uh, if we are judging other people based on what they do that's different than our own, uh, that verse 7, we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we, are, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Um, I think that really in context of what they're saying is all of the stuff that you find most important in your own life, sometimes you might have to die to that for the sake of something even better. It's not, you know, Paul just went and said that what you're doing isn't necessarily wrong. What you're doing isn't necessarily bad or, you know, it it just could be different than somebody else's. But what is the overriding purpose that Jesus demonstrates? The purpose that Jesus demonstrates is healing and wholeness and reconciliation with people that are different Mm -hmm. and he calls us to do the same if we are too busy condemning others for doing something to the Lord differently then we're we're doing it wrong and and one could even wonder if if we are not uh, learning how to live for others if we're not even learning how to die to others then are we really truly following Jesus as closely as we could right. so then again the demonstrations of his power come out on I don't know if I want that I'm kind right. of afraid because I like what I do right and I do it for a good reason because well, I course. like it right right everybody but, else should do what I'm doing but everyone else should do what I'm doing Mm. It's not quite. <laughs> but, but Paul is yeah. like, hey, you know, you're you're, you're supposed to live for other people and even die for other people, right? So that God would be glorified through Jesus Christ and the relationships that are being built. Right. Mm. Mm. Well, mm. I don't even know if I really want to go with the Jeremiah passage today. We've been kind of, uh, you know, um, maybe only to mention that uh, I'm maybe not as familiar with some of these Jeremiah passages as I probably should be, and how Jeremiah can go from one verse to the other verse talking about judgment and then talking about reconciliation. And I guess with all of these things, again, the demonstration of God's power, that wickedness will ultimately be judged, but then the demonstration of his abiding and steadfast love that restoration occurs and I think sometimes we're too we're maybe not confident enough in the love that Jesus has for us that we're so worried about the discipline that needs to happen in all of our lives right um, that we we shy away from that discipline uh, because we're not confident that he will restore. But here again, even in Jeremiah, people who have done terribly wicked things will be restored. Desolate places will have life. Um, even that whole uh, line in there about, um, you know, desolate, uh, but once again shall be heard uh, voices of mirth and voices of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, uh, voices of those who sing. Um, I think sometimes in all of our lives we might go through really desolate places right. and and these are times that we are encouraged and commanded the Psalms reference that you know that we mm-hmm. cry out to the Lord um, and even in the midst of the desolate places do we truly firmly believe that Jesus is still with us and is, and is moving us to a place of restoration and that restoration might seem to take forever right it might not ever seem to come and maybe even it's possible on this earth that it might not fully come to us Uh, but we do look forward for the hope that lasts forever and ever that he will rightly restore Yeah. yeah anything else today Um, I know that when we do our lectionary reading, um, we usually do it on Wednesdays. Today's Thursday. Uh, usually there are similar psalms on Wednesday. Last time, did we do this last Thursday? Or last was, Thursday. Okay. Last and Thursday, and these psalms were the same ones from last Thursday. And so as yeah. as we all engage, and I hope that you who are watching are doing your daily reading as well, 
again, the familiarity, the familiarity of the Psalms and the refrain that comes, I think, do help to train our hearts to be more expected of, of seeing God at work um, in our lives, both in the good times and the bad times. And this is why reading scripture, praying the scripture, and gathering with other people in fellowship and worship together is really, really good for us because it retrains our hearts uh, to be more in line with what God would have us to do. So I'm grateful for this time, Natalie, yeah. to, to do this today. And thank you for joining us today. You want to go ahead no, and close well, this? Yeah, but now I have something to say. Oh, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, awesome. <laughs> no, I think that um, you saying that about the Psalms, I think today, you know, we mentioned before we started today that lots of praise, lots of praise and recognition of God, recognition of power and might and steadfast love and all of that recognition. But I think that then we get into the other texts and we do talk about accountability and judgment. And so it's nice that we, we start off with those praises and we book in with those praises. And I think that that, um, as you're saying, you know, that this, this ex expectation and this training our hearts, I think that that's, um, I think that's a good thing that, that we, we see this praise, praising good, praising bad, praising difficult, all of those things. But, um, even in judgment, even in accountability, even in this falling away, but then this hope of reconciliation, there is this praise to be offered. Amen. Um, and so I, I think that's, that's good news. Great way to end. That's good news. Thank you. All right. Now I'll close us in prayer unless you have anything else. Nope. All right. Up, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, gracious Lord, thank you for your words to us today. Thank you for your steadfast love that you have for us. This love that is deeper and more full than any love that I think we can truly grasp the, the complete nature of this love that you have for us. But thank you for that, that we can lean into you and into that love that you have for us and that we can grow closer to you and that we can love others better and that we can die to ourselves that we may grow in faith as community and not just individually. And I just pray that as we do the things that we do, um, we are looking toward you and we are doing them in praise and honor of you, that you may be glorified and that you may be praised. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for joining us, everybody. If you want more content like this, do try to hit like and subscribe if you're watching YouTube. I know it's just one of those weird things, but uh, we'd love to get your comments as well. If you have any prayer requests, we'd be happy to listen to you and to pray with you. So we look forward to interacting with you in the future. Have a blessed day. Take care. Bye-bye.